All right, so I thought we'd do a pretty standard surface area example to illustrate this formula for calculating the area of a parametric surface and, you know, try to confirm that we're on the right track as far as computing um, areas, make sure that this gives us the right result because we, we know what the area for a sphere should be. So here's our sphere. Um, it's a fixed radius, capital R. We can parameterize using spherical coordinates, right? So we set rho equal to capital R. That gives us the parameterization for the sphere, right? With rho fixed, our remaining parameters are theta and phi. So we can compute the tangent vectors. We can calculate the cross product. We get the normal vector. I did that ahead of time just to save us some time on the details. So we should expect that when we compute the area, we should take the magnitude of this normal vector, integrate with respect to theta and phi, we should get the right answer. Now, um, that normal vector there looks, looks a little bit intimidating, but notice that you can, there's a common scalar multiple you can pull out, okay? There's a minus r squared sine phi that you can bring out and then you're left with you're left with let's see sine phi cos in fact you know yeah you would bring out the sine phi sine phi cos phi so sine phi rather uh, cos theta um, sine phi sine theta and then cos phi, okay? Uh, that simplifies things a little bit because we know that when you compute the magnitude of, vec of a vector, if there's a scalar multiple out front, you just multiply by the scalar. Or the magnitude if you happen to have a negative like you do here. Um, now, you might notice that, well, if you, if you were to bring one of the r's back in, um, this is more or less x, y, z. Um, well, in fact, it's, it's the unit vector. Um, this thing has magnitude 1, uh, because if you were to compute the magnitude, you're going to get um, sine squared phi cos squared theta plus sine squared phi sine squared theta. The sine squared plus cos squared adds up to 1, leaves you with just sine squared phi. And then you're adding cos squared phi, sine squared phi plus cos squared phi, you get 1. So this, this whole vector here has magnitude 1, and that means that the magnitude of the normal vector <coughs> is going to be r squared sine phi. Uh, now, of course, sine could be negative, so that's something that we should probably worry about. Um, but remember that with this parameterization, uh, theta runs from 0 to 2 pi, but phi well, phi just goes from 0 to pi, right? Um, and sine is positive between 0 and pi. For phi between 0 and pi, sine phi is positive, or at least non-negative. So this is indeed the magnitude, right? This will always be positive over our parameter domain. So we have the correct magnitude. Good. Um, now, one thing you might notice, uh, the, the minus sign out front, what that's telling us, that's telling us that the normal vector that we get from this parameterization is pointing back in towards the origin at every point, okay? Um, so it's pointing back towards the origin. Another thing that we can, we can get from looking at this magnitude is that this normal vector has its largest magnitude when it's near the equator. When we're near the equator, sine phi is equal to 1, the magnitude is r squared. Um, the normal vector actually shrinks to 0 as you approach the poles. Um, so it's not an ideal parameterization. We don't normally like our normal vector to go to 0. Um, but we're sometimes willing to accept that the normal vector might vanish as long as the only places where it vanishes are at the boundaries of our domain, that, that can be okay. All right. Now, for surface area, this isn't important. The direction in which the normal vector is pointing is not important because you're going to compute the magnitude. So if you're off by a minus sign, uh, the magnitude is going to eat that negative, right? 
Uh, once we get to integrals of vector fields, you might have to be a little bit careful about this. You might have to say, okay, um, do I have the inward pointing normal vector? Do I have the outward pointing normal vector? Um, this can be relevant in other scenarios. Um, here it's not. So we can go ahead and we can say, all right, what's the, uh, what's the area of my surface? The area, the area of my sphere is the integral from 0 to pi, integral from 0 to 2 pi, of r squared sine phi d theta d phi. Um, by the way, the other way, if, you, if you're still worried about that minus sign, um, the minus sign more or less amounts to the fact that I chose to write theta first. If I wrote phi first, um, switch the order of the two parameters, that reverses our orientation, reverses the sign for the normal vector, right? Um, so the sign depends on a choice that you make, which for this problem is not actually relevant, right? We're going to get the same area either way. And of course, if you compute this integral, um, there's no dependence on theta, so we get 2 pi from the theta part. Uh, for the phi part, when we integrate sine phi, we're going to get negative cos phi. We plug in the endpoints, we're going to get minus minus 1, minus minus 1, we're going to get 2. So we get 2 times 2 pi times r squared, we get 4 pi r squared for the surface area of a sphere. And that checks out, right? That's a known, known result for the area of a sphere, um, 4 pi r squared. Um, so, okay, one example doesn't, doesn't prove the rule, but it gives us at least some confidence that we're on the right track with this formula.